Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill Thursday, 4th of January 2023. Now, we haven't signed anyone yet, and it looks like uh, one of the players set to leave is very close to leaving. He hasn't signed to win the league yet, but we have young Aidan Muller. He seems to have uh, bagged himself a move to Dundalk FC in the League of Ireland, Premier Division. So this is from independent.ie, this is from the Dundalk Argus. Uh, following on from the signing of Gibraltar International Louisiana Sleaf from Blackburn Rangers on Tuesday, Dundalk FC are understood to be well enough deals to support two further new recruits from the UK. Both centre-back Aidan Muller and someone else um, are on head coaches Stephen O'Donnell's radar as he looks to add further to his squad ahead of the league opener with UCD, University College Dublin, on Friday, on February the 17th. Um, Mullow will turn 21 next month. He's currently on the books of Championship side Millwall. While he's made four senior appearances for the London side, he hasn't featured their first team to play in uh, the final few minutes of their 4-1 league win over Bristol City in May 2021. Six foot four defender did have a spell on loan at St Johnson in the Scottish Premiership in the second half of 2021, during which time he made eight appearances. Uh, this season, he has found himself on the fringes of things at the end, with only one appearance on the bench for the first team in the 2 0 defeat to Sheffield United back in August. Um, then they go on to talk about the other uh, board. Uh, the club have revealed details of their first pre season friendlies. Yeah, this is a pretty good move, I think, for the Muller. Because he can just jump straight into it because the Oak League of Ireland is a summer league. They're in their pre season now. The first pre season game is on uh, Friday, the January the 20th, so literally in a week's time. Um, they got a couple of friendlies, and uh, yeah, not bad. They are also in, um, so League of Ireland here runs from the 17th to his first game of the season, 17th of February, runs until November, so he can get in it, get playing. Um, the games are on Friday nights as well, so they have Saturdays off, which is a bit weird for a professional footballer, but that's I assume that's what they do. Playing Friday night, Saturdays off, maybe Sundays off as well. Uh, I know a bit Sunday is a bit religious in Ireland still, as much as it was. Um, so yeah, so third of November, season's up. And maybe he moves on, he moves back to the UK. Just got to wait until January the 1st, he can go again. So he's, he's like mid season break. Instead of being in um, May and June, we'll be in uh, December. So get to have uh, a proper Christmas as well. So not bad. And Dundalk are in. The UEFA Conference League, but they are in uh, the first qualifying round. They finished third in the league uh, last season, and that gets them a place in the UEFA Conference League. But in order to get to the group stages, it's a fair old trek, and it's it is up against them. They've got to play a first qualifying round game, then they play a second qualifying round game, and all these other teams get get in. You got the Portuguese team, you got Netherlands team. Got a couple of Belgium teams. They get through that. They go into the third qualifying round. Then you've got Scottish teams again, another Portuguese team, another Dutch team, um, Croatian team. If they get through that, then they they get into the playoff round. Then you've got you've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven teams there from. Uh, from the previous round, who get joined by an English team, French team, a Spanish team, an Italian team, and a German team. And then if they win through that, they go into the group stage. So it's a fair old trick to get into the group stages, but uh, it's uh, it should be good experience you know, playing in um, in Europe. So you'd hope they would. They would have enough about them to get through maybe the first qualifying round and maybe the second qualifying round. And then it's going to be a lot tougher in the third qualifying round. Um, but uh, there you go. That's Dundalk. Uh, Hayden Muller's new club there. 
So moving on to this, so we've got Gary Rowe again talking about transfer. So this is from uh, southernnews.co.uk. Gary Rowe discusses January exits as Mill received interest in midfielder. Yes, we haven't signed anyone and we've now got more players leaving. More players, no one's coming, more players leave. Well, technically one player is kind of what we've got. Two players. Uh, Idomo and Maku's come in. He's injured, so he's not ready to play yet. And he might not even be a first team prospect. He might be like a, a youth um, project. Um, and then we've got Romain Essay, who's basically jumped up from the under 18s and he's in the first team squad now. Um, quite remarkable. Um, so, Gary, uh, George Evans' only start this season came in a 1 0 defeat to Cambridge United in the Carabao Cup. Uh, Mill are reluctant to let George Evans leave the club until they found a suitable replacement. Oh, suitable? Hopefully, someone better than him. No. The midfielders had interest in the January transfer window after failing to start for the Lions in the Championship so far this season, playing less than an hour in total off the bench. As a result, there have been significant speculation that he could part then before the end of the season, and why it would leave manager Gary out short numbers in his first team squad. Um, yeah, is his, is his contract up at the end of the season? Um, then you would imagine he's, he's talking to clubs and he's looking at uh, what his next move is going to be. Maybe he needs to jump sooner rather than later. Um, the 28 year old is competing with Billy Mitchell, George Savile, Jamie Shackleton for a place in the starting lineup. Where, while George Honeyman and Callum Stiles are also able to play in one of the two midfield positions behind the front four. Oh. Rout confirmed that a January exit is still possible for Evans, although Mill are yet to receive an official bid and are unlikely to let him leave until more players are brought in. Uh, there's a bit of interest. There's a bit of interest rather than offers, the Mill boss told News at Den. Evo is a player that's been brilliant around the place. He's not had as much time on the pitch as he'd like. He's always looking at particular moments uh, where you think about whether we can let a particular player uh, out to play some football and feel normal again. You've got to try and be fair, but you've also got to think about your own squad. At this moment in time, we're a little bit light in numbers, so until we get players in, I don't foresee anyone going out. Well, obviously, Aidan Muller's going out. and They knew about that before they, they made it uh, known that he was going to be leaving, either on loan or permanent. So, there you go. Um, now, moving on to this, also from Gary Out. So, like I said, we haven't signed anyone yet, and we've got a game on Saturday, so it went quite quickly, it comes up on you. So we've got a day tomorrow, Friday, and then we're going to sign someone to play in the middle of the game. They've got, I think they've got to be uh, registered by uh, 5 o'clock on Friday, maybe, maybe even earlier than that, I'm not too sure. So pretty certain that we're not going to be signing anyone for the middle of the game. So Millwall boss weighs up chances of strengthening before Middlesbrough clash. The Lions are trying to bring at least two new players in this month while finding a like-for-like -like replacement for Benica Fobi. Uh, Gary Rutter said that Millwall are unlikely to make any new signings for Saturday's away match against Middlesbrough. The Lions will face Michael Carrick's side in a crucial battle for the top six on the T-side, but, uh, but are likely to travel to the Riverside Stadium in the exact same squad while continuing to work to add extra Attacking depth to the group as soon as possible. It will be their first championship match without Benic who was released from his contract to join at a club. Who? Exactly. Uh, last week, Isaac Lock is the only other departure so far, joining League Two side Stockport County on a permanent deal. Millwall made one new signing in January, bringing in 19 year old forward of Domo Maku from Shamrock Ravers as a light for light replacement for Fogu, uh, Alofi. Um, Is he? Not really. I think Quite different. Um, uh, Rao is still looking to fill the void left by Fobi as soon as possible, though he admitted that he's keen to add more players to his squad to give the Lions extra depth in the championship running. However, there has been an emphasis on taking time to find the right players to add to the team rather than rushing transfers just to get extra bodies through the door. Indeed. I don't know if you know, do you remember, do you remember last season um, when basically we had injury after injury after injury, and we basically had like it was like fourteen or fifteen fit players. And for some reason, 
because Gary, Gary Rowett couldn't tinkle the site, couldn't keep chopping and changing it, we went on a winning, a win after a win after a win, a winning run, and that boosted us way up, uh, up the table, and we ended up seventh going into the last game. Do you remember that? It feels like they're trying to replicate that, um, literally like old school. You know, old school uh, football where you didn't have the squad. You had your full team players. Um, you had one substitute, three substitutes in my day. Uh, one substitute was before my day. Uh, back pass rule was, was, was uh, I remember when you could pass the ball back to the goalkeeper and they would pick it up. Strange times uh, when it changed. But I think it needed to because I think, was it the, uh, was it the, Italian 90 or the US World Cup. I was absolutely ruined by that. Absolutely fucking ruined by a back passing goalkeeper. Might have been that. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty old school feel. We've got like uh, 13, 14 players. Might be going back to the old uh, three subs. Um, all very weird, but. Uh, Might be trying to replicate um, how it was before, so no one has to worry whether they're in the side or not. But are you fit? Then you're in the squad. That's simple as. Simple as. Um, so, let's carry on with this. Let's just knock this out. I think it's probably likely that we'll travel to Minnesota with the squad that we've got at the moment. Rat told me. I think we'd hoped that would strengthen quite quickly, but it's never that easy in this window. I know much has been said about Isaac going out, but we brought a Domo in as a light, light replacement. We thought it was alright to let Isaac go and start his career because he hadn't really impacted what we were doing necessarily. I think the only real miss for us is Benick and we need to replace him. We know that we wouldn't have let him go otherwise. Uh, we'll be working hard to bring at least two bodies in before the end. It's an age old question when you're going to do it. Uh, you know, when you do it when you do it, and that's a simple fact of that. We're working hard, Alex and Steve, the lads, try and get deals over the line. It's a January train to a window, it's never easy. Uh, no one has really done much at the moment, which shows that a lot of clubs are jostling in there for similar players. Indeed, if you watched yesterday's video, I told you, uh, I showed you all the January tra uh, uh, transfers in this window so far for the Championship. Not much going on, only Blackpool and Watford, uh, two teams that are in a bit of trouble, different reasons. They had bringing in four players each. Uh, a lot of teams hadn't brought anyone in or let anyone go, so kind of uh, not much going on. And uh, but we're 12 days into the January transfer window, um, we've got 19 left. So I wonder who these two players that we're going to bring in are. It'd be very interesting to see. But uh, yeah. on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.